Welcome to Faith in Five. Today we will be exploring the sacrament of baptism in Catholic Christianity. Before we explore the specifics, let's consider some general teachings on baptism. Firstly, it is a command given by Jesus. As he ascended from the Mount of Olives on the 40th day of Easter, Jesus gave the Great Commission. He said, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Secondly, it is the official start of being a Christian as you become a member of the church. Next, baptism washes away sin. Water on the outside represents the cleansing or purification of sin on the inside. Finally, Jesus got baptised in the River Jordan at the age of 30, and as he is the perfect example, we should do the same. Catholics perform infant baptism. This is to wash away original sin and to give the child a supportive church family as soon as possible. The features of the ceremony or service, which is also known as a christening, include the congregation saying vows promising to support the child and to help them grow up as Christians. This could be teaching them the Bible, advising them, or by praying for the individual. Godparents are chosen. These individuals are selected as good Christian examples who will take more of a responsibility in raising the child in the faith. Like the congregation, they will teach, advise, and pray for the baptised individual. The sign of the cross is made on the forehead of the child. This is very similar to farmers who mark their sheep. The making of the cross on the head indicates that this child belongs to God. So hands off, Satan. Water from the font is poured on the head of the child three times. Once in the name of the Father, then in the name of the Son, and then in the name of the Holy Spirit. This water represents the cleansing of original sin, which is an act of God's grace. The child is then welcomed into the church and its journey of faith begins. It's worth noting that the font is usually found at the entrance of the church to represent that baptism is the entrance to faith. Baptism is the first of the seven sacraments of the Catholic Church and in it, as we have mentioned, outwardly we see water as a sign of purification from sin, which happens on the inside. Put briefly, a sacrament is an outward sign of an inward grace, a sign that shows the work of God's love happening in that individual. In the Catholic Church, the sacrament of baptism is later followed by the sacrament of confirmation. This is when the child is old enough to make their own choice. In infant baptism, the child is baptised because of the faith of their parents. Now, the individual is able to confirm that they themselves want to follow God and the teachings of the church. The features of the ceremony or ritual include the bishop laying hands on the believer. This is to appoint them as an official witness of the faith and to invite the Holy Spirit into them. The Spirit will guide them and empower them to be successful Christians. The bishop will anoint their head with oil in the sign of the cross, similar to baptism, to remind them that their lives belong to God. The bishop and congregation will pray that the individual will be given the gifts and develop the fruits of the Spirit. The believer will also take on the name of a saint. As well as being something to aspire to, Catholics believe that there is a living community of saints in heaven. They can pray for us and guide us and unlike us, they don't need to take a break, so they can pray for us constantly. By taking on that name, you have a patron in heaven. Some examples could be Saint Clare, Mary or Saint Francis. When confirmed, the individual has taken ownership of their Christian journey and as a result of following God's teachings and of being filled with the Spirit, they should demonstrate the fruits of the Spirit, which are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. While some Christians disagree with this kind of baptism, Catholics do have supporting evidence. 
St. Peter said, repent and be baptised all of you. All of you includes infants. As a saint and as a disciple of Jesus, he is a perfect example to listen to. In the Bible, there are family baptisms, such as St. Peter baptising the family of the Roman Cornelius. If it happened in the Bible, that shows how we should act today, and a family baptism would have included children. Jesus said, let the little children come to me. They can come to Jesus spiritually through infant baptism. As it gets rid of original sin, it makes sense to baptise as early as possible. We all have this sin due to being seminally present in Adam, in Eden, when he and Eve sinned. We inherited this sinfulness and it is a barrier between God and us that we need to deal with hastily. To understand this topic further, purchase and read Peter Vardy's Puzzle of Christianity or follow the QR code to the BBC Religions page for this topic. That was your Faith in Five.